Gregory Kluter and his business partner, Michael Amushalelo, were arrested in October last year for contravening money laundering and banking laws. They made a name for themselves as forex traders and invested money on behalf of many Namibians. They also made their political aspirations known, established the Power Party and placed large billboards throughout the city. I spoke to Gregory Kluter about the arrest. Well, it was last year, I believe it was on the 10th of October. So what happened is uh, we were literally apprehended um, while we were busy doing our normal, I was on my way to the office, and I was literally apprehended in Independence Avenue. I mean, there was no prior communications with, uh, with the police or with Bonn or Bangor, Namibia. These guys literally just apprehended us on surprise. So it was interesting that, I mean, we were apprehended uh, based on the fact that we, we uh, broke the uh, Banking Act. But for some whatever reason, we were never informed prior to that because the act is clear of the bank that should you contravene any act, that you should be called in and then you should be questioned upon your business activities or explain your business module. But in this event, obviously, it didn't happen. But yeah, we, we've come to understand that, you know, there's, there's more to it than what the eye meets at this current point. So right now we have a legal case. Uh, we, we, you know, we had a case um, which is now uh, the 20th of August. We will go back to court. Uh, and then we have a case in the high court also where we are currently fighting for the assets being unfrozen. So that's currently what our the status quo is at this moment. Forex traders Michael Amushalelo and Gregory Kluter were arrested last year and their assets were frozen as a result. I asked Gregory Kluter what they're doing now and to explain what will happen to those monies invested by other Namibians. At this current moment, the whole business module is on hold until this matter is sorted out. However, we still do trading because uh, it's not illegal to do online trading. You can still trade online. I mean, it's a market that's it's an international market. There's no law that prohibits you to trade. But the business module that we were doing is currently on hold since it's a legal matter at this current stage. Uh, uh, with regard to the people's money, uh, what's currently happening is that we can't do anything. We, we, we basically fighting in high court to have all this situation sorted out, but the legal system in itself is a timely and a costly process. And uh, uh, so unfortunately for our investors, we have to uh, uh, go the long road of going the legal route. Um, so they just have to be patient with us. It's a bit stressful and frustrating for them because people have uh, invested their life savings, uh, people have plans with this money and I mean, the way how this was handled, I mean, first of all, you need to look at it from this perspective that uh, Bonn is saying that they are uh, having the best interest of the Namibian public at heart here. But the actions speak a different language because you can't say that, listen, I want to protect you guys, but I'm freezing your money with these guys. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't make any logical sense at this point in time. But uh, um, like I said, we, we've tried by any means to try and fight the system, but uh, it's taking quite a bit of time at this moment. Uh, all I want to say is uh, uh, for people out there, do not lose faith in the current system that we have in the country. The laws are there. We just need to implement them. Let's elect and vote the right leaders in our positions and then um, keep following us in order to, uh, to hear the status quo on our current case. And that's about it. I asked Gregory whether he has faith in the banking systems that are in place. The laws are there in place. However, it's the, the, the people that are working there uh, that's really not following these laws that are set in place. You understand? But the good thing is we have gotten to a point where the general public are no longer sleeping. The people are awake now. So whatever happening right now, whatever laws are in place, people are following up. People are asking more questions. And for those reasons, uh, you can strictly see that, I mean, these guys can no longer just push their wheels through. So to an extent, I mean, and, and we can clearly see it now, that's why they are dragging this whole uh, process at this moment. But to an extent, people are watching with a close eye on what's happening on this case. So I must say, uh, I'm hoping that the legal route and the law will be followed here. But I have, like, say, 40% <laughs> trust in how the system currently works now. Forex trader Gregory Kluter and his partner Michael Amushalelo ignited the political playing field with the announcement of the birth of the Power Party. I asked Gregory Kluter to update us on why the party didn't participate in last year's elections. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we didn't get the, uh, the signatures that we were required to get to register as a political party. But we still got the next five years coming up. Uh, so we're still working on that. It hasn't gone to sleep or anything of the sort. 
obviously with what happened last year with all our businesses and we, we, we sort of have to get back to fixing our lives first. Uh, I mean, we get a lot of employees working for us. We need to fix our existing businesses first and then get back on that horse. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you need financial support if you want to pull, push a political agenda. So power, we're still moving forward with that. I spoke to Gregory Kluter and asked him how he and his partner sustain themselves now that their assets have been frozen. We've, we've got a business uh, uh, where we build food trailers and multi-purpose useful trailers. Uh, uh, we do canvases, uh, we, we build, um, uh, what do you call this, carpentry and all sorts of things. So we, we, we venture in a couple of other businesses apart from online forex trading and so forth. Uh, obviously, uh, all businesses have been negatively affected by the current pandemic. But I think this is actually a good eye-opener moving forward. I mean, we, a country such as ourselves have never went through such a process. So I think with this, what currently happened is that looking forward now, government can come back and say, listen, guys, we need to have a certain budget set aside for anything that happens like this 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now to assist individuals or businesses and so forth. So, yeah, but um, we're pushing. You can't lay down and stay down. Gregory Kluter is, however, very optimistic about Namibia's future and had this to say. Corruption is something that's there. I think it's something that goes across the world. However, what you can see with the current opposition parties that came into parliament, you know, it, it's no longer business as usual. I mean, the, you can see there's a high interest from the general youth. I mean, I think uh, they, we, they stream it online on those different social media platforms. So there's an interest from the general public now to see what's happening. There's an interest to see that what are the opposition parties doing to push the current government to level up to an extent so that it can benefit the normal citizens of this country. So I have a little bit of faith on what's currently happening now, especially from the opposition parties that are pushing government. So if you push the current government, they are then forced to implement the laws and order that will benefit the normal citizens of the country. Otherwise, they will definitely lose popularity. So I can see, and obviously with power coming in with the, next, with the coming years, I believe that we're moving in the right direction from a polit uh, political perspective. Community activist Mikhail Losper's quest to see justice and dignity restored to the southern communities is relentless. He recently visited the dilapidated Brownfells Agricultural School and blames government for the deplorable state of education in the region. Uh, three weeks ago, I visited Brownfells Agricultural High School uh, under the guidance of the school board chairperson and members of the school board where I was confronted with issues uh, which resulted in uh, poor school management. Uh, first things first, the second inspector, uh, a certain Mr. Amutenya or whatever he is, is constantly interfering with the school board and this is a well-known fact in the auto circuit i'm also reliably informed uh, not just uh, in the case of brownfields but elsewhere that the inspector is busy exercising powers vested in the minister uh, such as the suspension or the dissolution of school boards um, according to the education act article 24 subsection 1 and 2 that power is vested in the minister and the minister only. I am sitting here now with letters addressed to the executive director of education, Sanet, and various key players in the education uh, in Korihas. Yet these letters are unresponded to. Brothers has an issue of, of poor relationships between the principal and the school board and a poor relationship between the principal and the teachers and, and, and the interference and abuse of power by the second inspector. Brownfields, together with many other schools in the Korihas area, is faced with corruption, money laundering and theft, uh, particularly pertaining to the administration of, of hostels. Most of the money that's getting lost at schools in the Korihas area is, 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 is committed. Those crimes are committed at hostels. Yet the ministry and, and the regional director are unresponsive uh, to these issues. We need to understand that depriving learners of a proper space, uh, infrastructure, you know, a, a proper environment to learn is simply denying them quality education. How do you encourage a learner to go to school that looks like a, a prostitute center, like, like it looks like a brothel? The government is encouraging school dropouts. 
on top of uh, a poor administration of the management team at schools and the lack of government intervention, we are faced with lazy teachers. We are faced with issues where teachers are beefing uh, each other. We are faced with learner-teacher intimate uh, and, or, or sexual relationships. This is due to the fact that government is not serious uh, with schools in, in, in the Korikas district. The school board of, of Bramfels is said to be dissolved or suspended, yet when withdrawals of money are to be made, the same suspended school board is used to authorize uh, transactions. Who is fooling who here? I am made to believe that the Regional Directorate of Education in Kunene region is captured by the majority party politicians and, and political aspirants. Such as in the case of, of Valvicha Junior Secondary School, uh, second, when I expose the dilapidated state of the school, I am reliably informed that they immediately wanted to renovate the school, which was confirmed by the, by the principal, by the way. But the chief regional officer interfered and said that that decision must be put on hold just because LOSPA brought it to light. We are not going to do anything because LOSPA is a political candidate, uh, he will get all the credit. My question to that zombie is, does me exposing the issue and the ministry taking immediate action benefit me or does it benefit the learners? Bramfels and Seke both has to be investigated because hostel development funds are getting lost. And I'm very disappointed by Sanet's conduct uh, because how do you tell me you are sending an investigation team who only comes there to interview the people involved? And then, and then thereafter, they, they compile a report saying, we have investigated. What nonsense is that? When we say investigate, we are saying, open the documents, open the books. Thereafter, Sanet comes here uh, with a nonsense report. In fact, she did not even write that report. She's not an independent thinker. She's a non-thinker. She's influenced by politicians. Now, what she did was, she took my statement regarding the state of the school and tried by all means to discredit it because uh, it was like she was speaking in tongues. I could not understand anything she was saying uh, because all I could read was what I wrote uh, in a discrediting form. Yes, there may or may not have been a mis uh, misinformation, but those are just uh, names of organizations and people, in people involved uh, that made the sponsorships and etc. But the numerical values are factual. Then uh, this uh, chief uh, regional education officer or whatever he is comes here howling uh, with his butternut mentality saying uh, we are going to, to sue LOSPA. And I told him to go ahead uh, so I exposed his stupidity in court. Nevertheless, we are not here to blame any nonsense person as they are important issues or if you like, uh, more important issues uh, that we need to deal with. And, and what I'm saying here is for as long as the management and administration of schools are politicized and, and, and the persistence of lack of action we will continue to expose the leadership in their decisions or lack thereof. When I visit schools, I ask permission from authorities. I take pictures and videos after being granted permission. I don't visit schools as a political candidate. I visit schools as an activist to influence the decisions and bring the much needed change uh, that the community is failing to address. Uh, we are faced with the a Chinese virus with the potential to wipe out uh, Namibia uh, should it escalate. Yet schools have opened. And with, with, with schools in a dilapidated state, do we honestly uh, think public schools have the resource capacity to take preventative measures uh, against the Chinese virus? Generally, I have learned uh, that Korikas is suffocated by the central government in terms of development and adequate funding because Korekas is seen as Dei Yudiev Damaras which is a fact there is a tribal agenda against the people of Korekas Korekas fails to see development because the minority tribe dominates the area but we can't allow that to affect the education and health sectors we need our people to be educated and healthy I want to believe 
that the government is constantly and deliberately depriving the development of schools in Korihas because an uneducated people are, are, are easily misled. And, and they want to keep the status quo of the minority tribes to be known as lazy people, drunkards, school dropouts, and, and, and that can't be allowed. With regard to the general corruption in Korihas, especially the criminals of the local authority, it's inevitable that they are going to rot in jail those ones. I'm personally going to ensure that. They must go to jail. They have destroyed lives and they are continuing to do so despite our efforts of approaching the Anti-Corruption Commission of Namibia, simply because they are protected by the majority party. I expected the majority party uh, district leadership to call out all these criminals, corrupt people, because they are the administrative force but for me to find out that they are dancing to the same music. In fact, in the district ranks, uh, the district executive chairperson is the worst. He is unhelpable. In closing, Sanet Stienkamp and Angeline Yance must devise a strategy to rehabilitate schools in the Korihas uh, district. At this point in time, I really don't care about any budget because every year they are budgeting. But Korika schools don't benefit adequately from those budgets. Failure to use their juristic powers and rescue the situation. We will then use uh, our powers as a community to seek external funding and renovate these facilities, bypassing all government protocols. They can personally sue me or take me to, to, to jail because we can allow the disregard of the executive director and the regional director towards the people of Korikas powered by political agenda and allow our people to suffer. You are already uh, playing with the financial resources, the natural and mineral resources of the land. And we can't allow you to uh, play with our academic resources, which are our learners and our schools. Community activist Mikhail Lospery encouraged Namibia's youth to engage in politics and play a more meaningful role in their future. Lastly, I want to encourage my fellow youth to start taking part in politics. Youth must be the decision makers of our country. We need to leave this alcohol and partying and uh, this uh, whatever, humbly bumbly and all sorts of non-productive things which are only destroying our lives. Youth are in this hallucinative state of wanting to trend. The only way you are going to trend after indulging in alcohol and drugs is you are going to be a statistic in television news and uh, newspapers because of rape and murder and robbery and all sorts of things. So we must emancipate ourselves from unnecessary nonsense and start engaging in activities that allows us uh, to make decisions which shape our future. A lot of youth have left uh, their futures in the hands of old people uh, who are going to die anyway soon. A lot of old people, when they occupy a seat of authority, they are only there as salary collectors and to secure their retirement. Most of them don't even care about the decisions they make, whether it's good or bad. They just make decisions as long as it's good for them or beneficial to them and their families uh, because they are going to die soon. So it is imperative uh, that we as youth uh, take over government and lead ourselves with a sober mind. The youth must start taking politics serious. The youth must participate in politics. We must take our futures in our hands. Uh, when, 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 it, when, when it comes to voting, we don't vote. People don't see, you don't see the need to vote. When it comes to political participation, we don't participate, yet uh, we want change. When we look at uh, countries like our neighbor in South Africa, youth take politics serious. Countries like America, that's why things are happening for young people there. Yet in this country, we must beg you for political participation. We must provide you with alcohol and food in order to see you at political rallies. How then do you want government to take us serious? Surely we don't think that the leadership will entrust irresponsible young people with, the, with, with state resources and positions of authority. Let's get serious and take Namibia forward with a sober mind. Leave this trending in alcohol and in those things, humbly bumblies, and let us get serious with politics because 
We as youth, we are the future. We are the future decision makers. We can't have drunkards and, and, and drug addicts uh, leading this country. So we need to look into that. I sent this clip to the Ministry of Education's Public Relations Officer, Absalom Absalom, and... <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> Namibian artist Ease of Yes Ya fame has come up with an innovative idea to celebrate the creativity of Namibians with his latest project. I recently spoke to Yvonne von Holtz and Rupert Sony, who are spearheading efforts to revive Namibia's tourism industry about this initiative. We've got uh, Namibian artist Ease, um, whose band Yes Ya, and they have a new song coming up uh, called Feel the Magic, which is unreleased and it somehow fits into what Namibia is. Um, it's about Namibians, or a country, or people working together, community, uh, message of hope, working together. We have asked a lot of people on flat social media saying, look, send us your clips, hopefully wide angle, not tall. <laughs> um, send us your clips of you dancing to the song, the emotions, just singing, lip syncing, do doing a good deed, helping other Namibians, because we want to showcase Namibia. And it's a, cl it's a clip, it's a lot of clips in the video. So, you know, we want to show what Namibia is, how during these times, it's not just tourism, how we have helped each other. There have been campaigns, uh, co-feed, and there's so many different campaigns to help people, help the animals, help everyone. And this is what he wants to make it an um, anthem, anthem for the Namibia fighting during the COVID. Because, you know, if you look at it, we came out way more ahead of almost every country in the world. Despite the criticisms, despite what happened, we still, we are here, we don't have lockdown, we are on stage three already. And, you know, this, sh this song sh should show uh, the world what we have achieved um, by means of this, because this will help boost tourism as well as brand Namibia locally in SADC and internationally. And that's our aim. Here's how you can get in on the action. Throughout the last couple of weeks, uh, even months, uh, with this whole coronavirus lockdown and everything, I saw so many positive messages and videos people posted online, how they help each other and how we as people, when we connect, we can really overcome this whole thing. Okay. And I have an unreleased song, which I want to uh, shoot one of the biggest music videos in, a, in Namibia ever, where we all contribute. I want you out there singing with me, dancing with me everything so so if you're on instagram swipe up now if you're on facebook check down below there's a link where you can download my unreleased song it's called feel the magic and i want you to just listen to it switch on your camera either dance best would be even sing along in the chorus and uh, send me those videos to this email address down here or via whatsapp to this number down here and in the links below just in case you don't like singing or dancing if you have videos or shoot videos where you help people wherever in namibia you are and you are helping someone and you have a video of that please send it to us we want to really i'm working together with local is uh, dot travel and we want to make one of the biggest videos where we just show how united we as Namibians are and what we can really do and achieve if we work together. So please do make these videos, sing with me, and let's show the world what Namibia is all about. Yes, yeah. Feel the loving all around us. Feel the power that keeps us going on. All around us, feel the power that keeps us going. Feel the loving all around us. Feel the power that keeps us going on. Feel the magic all around us. Feel the power that keeps us going on and on.
Members of the legal fraternity have donated blankets to impoverished Namibians to help warm their winter nights. It's a wrap handed out some of the blankets donated. Check this out. We are very excited about these blankets. It's very chilly nowadays and we have 20 children at the Dolam Children's Home and our couch has been empty. Now we can cuddle together with these soft blankets. I want to give thanks to the lawyers for thinking about the children during this time. I wouldn't have afforded to buy this myself, only two or one, but now I have enough to cuddle in front of the TV and also when we are having storytelling time. Thank you so, so much for the Dolam Children's Home. Hey, that's how we are. It's me and my sister, she's going to job, and my grandmother and two of my uncles and three kids, three small kids, and three, four of big ones. Mm. I lose my job. I was working at Rocky Crest, but the lady takes me out because of Corona. The thing is, see, 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 see the woman that I was working, she, is, she stay in Zambia. Now she say, hey, Melissa, you must stay home because I'm traveled too much and maybe you will get Corona. It does, it takes me out, no work. It will help me too much because we get very cold. It's very dead here, it's very cold. Because of Corona, we get cold. There is no blanket for us to wear and it will very too much help for us. We praise you, we, I am very happy to get, to get home with them. Oh, I am happy. Also with all of them, I get home, no problem. And with that, it's a wrap. Stay woke with It's a Wrap by following us on our social media pages.